Hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McLeod. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. So much to talk about, so little time to do it in. Welcome, 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 I say, to the Scotty McClue Show, the global talk show live on the top global broadcast platform, Facebook Live. Dinky do and a very, very warm welcome to you. I'm Scotty McClure, I'm the world's top broadcaster, and I am here with you tonight for one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. Scintillating information, education, and entertainment, not just for one nation. But for all nations, everybody's watching there, excellent stuff, lovely to have you with me, and welcome, 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 I say. Now, we have a lot to discuss tonight. I have opened up the lines so you can Skype in to scotty.mcclue, scotty.mcclue, if you want to Skype in, but I want intelligent conversation, interesting conversation. I don't just want someone that goes, hello, Scotty, or anything like that. We haven't really time for that because we have so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. And of course, time is always of the essence, always very, very difficult to squeeze everything in to a show such as this, a global talk show, perhaps the only global talk show on the planet. You make it, of course. So get sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and telling 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue, live at 10, each Sunday evening on the big one, live on Facebook Live, the Scotty McClue Show. Now, good evening, Scotty, says Andy McClurry, Neil James Mills, evening, Mr. McClue, and Giuseppe Buschetti, good evening. Hello, Scotty, says Ian Walker. Good evening, dear boy, I'm listening. In Liverpool, says the wonderful J.P. McCusker, a great guy. So, excellent, excellent. This is what we want. This is the big one. Now, it's up to all of you to share and share and share and share and share and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 all about me live at 10. Scotty McClue, if you've never heard of me and you're an alien live form from another planet, welcome, welcome, welcome to the program, I say, but I shall spell it for you. Capital S, small C, O, double T, I, E. That's the Scotty McClue, capital M, small C, capital C, L, U, E. That is the McClue. This is the way television is going, so get used to it. Excellent stuff. Right. Tell us where you are around the world, of course, like JP's told us he's in Liverpool. And uh, good morning, Scotty from Australia, says Erica Meyer. Good morning, Erica. Lovely to have you with us listening in Oz. George Mullins watching. Good evening, Scotty. Paraguay checking in, says John McDonough. Paraguay in South America listening and watching to Scotty McClue right now. Dinky Doo here on Facebook Live. What are we talking about tonight? I hear you scream at your devices. Well, I think we should set up a committee that can hire and fire world leaders. So we put an end to dictatorships. And if you want to run a country, you have to pass muster with the committee. So there you are. It doesn't matter how big you are, who you are, how many armaments you've got, how much dosh you've got, you have to pass muster with the committee that hires and fires world leaders. Uh, so there we are. Enjoying once again, says Ben Lucas. Scotty, what are the topics tonight, says Alex Duff. Well, if you're listening, Alex, I shall give you the topics. I shall give you them specially for you and for the rest of the world. So that's what we're doing. Dave Hemsley, good evening, Scotty. Good evening, sir. Greetings from Clyde Bank. And a fine evening it is, says Douglas William Bryce. Graham Badger, who elects this committee? Ah, well, Graham. That's when we want to look at this. We don't just want the richest people. We don't just want the big banks. We don't want people who say, yes, he's a cousin of mine and I own most of the country, blah, 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 blah. We don't want that. We need a fair element of transparency on the committee. So we would look at how that's formed. You tell me, remember, this is your program, he says wagging the pencil. This is your program. It's not just mine. We are all together in the world's top talk show. Now then, Scotty, where are you going to hide during the oncoming nuclear holocaust? 
I'm in the underground. Well, I don't know if there's much point in hiding. I remember having this discussion with a friend of mine. And we said, if you get a three-minute more warning, what do you do in that three-minute period? Do you wash a hand? Which hand do you wash? Do you boil an egg? The egg is not going to be ready. Do you do what they used to say and get under the table? Well, a fat lot of good that will do you a big oak table on your head. So what do we do if such a thing as a nuclear attack happened? It shouldn't happen. Of course, if the world leaders are responsible and talk to each other like grown-ups, that's what I say. Uh, what about the airstrikes Trump did? Was it a right thing to do? Should we be worried if the UK joins in, says Angie Thompson? Well, this, Angie, is why I think Scotland should make itself independent or should gain ind independence as quickly as possible because Scotland is actually our big, big opportunity globally for hope, for a sense of normality, for a sense of common sense and we'll go into that as we talk but i'm not going to make the program about scottish independence we've had lots and lots of programs about that uh, we all duck says michael mcguigan there we are three minutes i wouldn't be able to get out my close in three minutes i've seen terminator 2 well there you are you're uh, ahead of the rest of us how do we skype says edward james edward james we skype scotty dot McClue. So there you are, Scotty Dot McClue. Where is Bam Bam? Tommy the Commie, Scotty, says Neil James Mills. I think Tommy the Commie's gone to ground, Neil James Mills. I have not heard or seen, hide nor hear of him for about eight to ten years. Ten years, I would think, since we heard from Tommy the Commie. Common sense? Where's that, says Edward James? No more indie chat, says Douglas William Bryce. Really, Douglas William, I don't think we can ever say no more of certain chat on Scotty McClure's programme if it's stimulating, interesting, and will happen as Scottish independence will. You don't need to be political. I'm not a political animal, of course, but I can tell you that it would be the best thing, not just for Scotland, but for the world. Uh, so there we are. Why do we allow our politicians to continue to lie to us? Says Gaz Rowley Jones. Now, Gaz Rowley Jones. That's a very big question. I think if a politician is caught lying, they should be out because it's dishonest. And we don't want dishonesty. We want integrity. So we should know that what's been said in the House of Commons or in the House of Lords is the truth, is fact. So there we are. I do agree with you there. Uh, ah, alas, the good old L107 days, Scotty's is Neil James Mills. Yes, L107 was a fabulous radio station and a very great idea. Unfortunately, we had stewardship problems and uh, that put paid to that. Tut, tut, your nose is growing, Scotty. Mm. The British have been doing the Americans' bidding since Washington crossed the Delaware. The special relationship is like one man and his dug. Now, what I was wondering is, should we actually have America rejoining us on this side? Would America want to be part of Scotland and come home to Mama? Come home to Mama. Yes. Uh, not for a while, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. See more apolitical. Yes, indeed. Uh, Ian Aitken is watching. Fantastic, Ian. Dinky do to you, I say. I'm just sorting something out there. There we go. That's better. Uh, welcome, Ian. Lovely to have you with us. Now, uh, I'm only with you for the hour, and as I say, the time will absolutely fly in. Can you tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClure is live at 10 o'clock sharp? Spread the word share on your Facebook. We will have several share points as the program goes on. But what I would like to see is a share, 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 share. And you can do one now just to waken everybody up to say, Scotty McClure is on, come and watch him live. I think some people are getting a little bit flexible. They think I could squeeze a bit more out of uh, my film or something like that and Scotty will upload it to YouTube and I can watch it later. I don't mind that, a bit of catch-up, but it's always lovely to have you all here live. That's catch-up, not 
ketchup. All right, very, very important. So, one of our subjects tonight, should we have a committee that hires and fires world leaders? You tell me what you think. You can Skype in to scotty.mcclure and we will have a chit chat if you want to Skype in. Very, very important. All right. When are you back in the wireless? And uh, well, there's big talks go on all the time. There's apparently a new station opening up within the next week or two and we will see what goes on there. Because my advice to anyone setting up a radio station or a television station, don't do it until you've spoken to Scotty McClure. He'll get you your audience and he'll tell you what to do. I once worked for a radio station and I was the only one that knew about what we were talking about. I didn't volunteer the information because it wasn't my business. They had their own big wigs, but um, nobody ever asked me a question. It's very strange. Nobody said, Scotty, you'll know how to do this. Could you help us out here? And I would, of course, said, yes, I'd be delighted. I have made millions and millions of pounds for owners of television and radio stations in the past and will no doubt do so again. Excellent stuff. Right. Uh, Dave Hemsley, you've got a see more there. I'm not going to risk it because last week we did a see more and what happened, we, uh, we got cut off. So I'm not risking that again. Uh, good evening, Mr. McClure. Good evening to you, I say. Lovely to have you all with us. Now, keep your uh, information coming in. We're talking about that. Our other subject for discussion is, should we ban the Grand National? As it's not entirely safe for the horses and it's dangerous for the riders. Sorry, I'm leaning on a great big desk there and I'm shaking the camera. I do sincerely apologize. So if you'd like to come up and Skype in scotty.mcclue, let's hear from you. Now then, we've got lots coming up here. Fantastic, there it is. A committee as in the new Illuminati. Alex Duff, I don't think the Illuminati actually exist. I think they are a mythical concept of conspiracy theorists. That's what I think goes on there because if the Illuminati ran the world, would you not have approached Scotty McClue and asked him to be part of it? Would I not be bringing a lot of common sense to a committee of the Illuminati? Would they not have got in touch with me and tipped me the wink and all the rest of it? I would think so. It would make sense. Uh, so, there are already a committee, says Ian Walker, and he mentions a name. Ian, I can't uh, have that, actually, so there we are. So, we'll have to just delete your comment. Sorry about that. There we go. Remember, not to mention names of individuals uh, when we're discussing. Good evening, Sir McClue. Sir Stayeb Yusfe. Yusfe, have I said that correct, Stayeb? Very, very important. What time's the link going to cut out tonight? Scotty, says George. We don't know, George. Sometimes it cuts out. Sometimes I think I may have cut it out. So there is a possibility that may have happened. Let's hope it doesn't. Jan Mays and four others have just shared the video. Excellent. So there we are. So if we're talking about the Illuminati, I'm pretty sure Scotty McClure would be one of their members because I would bring common sense and integrity to the committee. Uh, what time do we have? Yes. Now, we are just coming up. We've altered the times on the old computers, so everything should be all right. Mick McFarlane has just tagged me in a post. Excellent, Mick. Thank you very much for that. I think they should use dogs and a dummy fox for the gentry. So you think bring back fox hunting. We're talking here about the Grand National. We're not actually talking about fox hunting, but a very interesting one. Andrew Taylor's watching. Excellent stuff. Lovely to have you all with me. And uh, Mick and Anne have commented. There we are. I'm just bringing all the comments up. Tremendous stuff. Um, what have we got here? Grand National is a barbaric race and it should be banned, says Angie Thompson. Excellent stuff, Angie. Just a wee sip here of the water. Excuse me a second while I have a quick sip mm -hmm. of the water. Marvellous stuff. There we go. Mm, yes. Mm. Ooh, that's lush. That's absolutely fantastic. Right. What have we got here? So, uh, yes, if they're going to fire missiles, uh, and would they do requests and fire one 
when the council George, you're obsessed with the council. I don't understand it. The chap behind you looks like he could be in the Illuminati. The chap behind me is me, Alex Duff. So there you are. I shall, in fact, show you. There you go. That is me, Alex Duff. So less of it, if you don't mind. And over there is me as well. All right, have we got that? That's fantastic. There we go. Good, good. Right. Uh, now, what else are we talking about? Julianne Scott, yes, marvellous stuff. Um, is that Corporation Pop? Says uh, Julie and Scott, marvelous stuff. That's what you would call in uh, ginger in Glasgow, Julianne ginger. Everyone talks about ginger. A bottle of ginger is a bottle of lemonade. I would imagine it came from the days of the um, ginger ale. It's only a 35 year old photo, says George Mullen. Is that right, George? Linda McCall's watching. Lovely to have you with us, Linda. So, main subjects for discussion tonight. Should we have a committee? that hires and fires world leaders. Let's have your opinions on that. Remember, the phones are open. You can Skype in. Scotty.McClue is my Skype handle. And if you'd like to Skype in, feel free to do so. And I will take your call live on air. Tidy Scotty, absolutely. How's the GoFundMe going, Scotty, says Ron Stewart. Not too bad, Ron, thanks to your good self. Uh, I've lowered the goal slightly, so we're looking for half a million pounds, and we're looking for 50,000 to set up the broadcasting setup. So we've got 320 pounds last time I looked. The rest of you, if you think Scotty McClue has entertained me for 25 years, he's given me many a smile, I think I can afford a couple of pounds, then please do so. Get your card out. Don't do it during the program. Do it at the end of the program, of course. Get your card out. Go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. You'll see the links up there and uh, pop in some pennies, some of your hard earned, because what we're wanting to do is set up a free independent media and a free independent Scottish media. Now, the British Broadcasting Corporation, in their wisdom, uh, somebody had approached them and asked them if they would do a six o'clock Scottish news in place of the network news. A six o'clock Scottish news. A Scottish six. And they said, they free the Scottish six, I see. And they said, no, they wouldn't do that, but they would give Scotland a new channel and a £30 million budget. Now, as far as I understand it, the radio channel for the BBC in Scotland, BBC Radio Scotland, their budget is around £25 million. So you wouldn't get much of a television budget for £30 million. I'm a firm believer that Scotland needs its own free media. Now, I can set it up, but you're going to have to go fund me. There's two ways you can do this. You can either go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue, or you can go to PayPal and uh, look up Scotty McClue, but you'll get the links on the Scotty McClue website at www.scotty hyphen If you go to the Scotty McClue website right now, you'll see the links for PayPal and for GoFundMe. Click on them and stick a couple of pounds in a fiver, a tenner. Somebody gave a hundred pounds. Just whatever you feel comfortable with giving, but then you're not worrying about shares and things. Are they going up? Are they going down? Somebody said, did you uh, give money to Scotty McClure? Did you get a good return? He said, no, I gave him two quid. I think we can stand two quid. If everybody puts in two pounds, then we can start to build a fund for setting up an independent media. We could also, if we get enough dosh in, look at the purchase of media assets and do this properly. Uh, good mates, I'll pop something onto again, says Ron Stewart. Ron, that is extremely kind of you. I was very, very, very impressed on Friday. Uh, a gentleman put £10 in, and he told me last week he would put £10 in uh, if I followed him on Twitter. I followed him on Twitter, and he was as good as his word. It just does not get better than that. So there we are. So gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Uh, Scotty, I've just used the fund money on a caravan. It's in Salkoats, says Ian Walker. Very nice Salkoats. A lovely 
part of it. Do not sell coach for the fair. Now, um, what else have we got here? Mick McFarlane is watching. Excellent, Mick. I did see you pop up earlier. Right. Can we have a share point for the program, please? Share, 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 share. Main subject for discussion tonight, should we have a committee to hire and fire world leaders? Then you don't have dictatorships. Very, very important. Uh, I should have mentioned something you might get cut off now, plus... Your gas and lecky, says Ian. Yes, don't be mentioning that, Ian. Scotty, what's your opinion on smart meters? Well, Stephen, I have had um, the uh, suppliers get in touch offering me a smart meter, and I have said no thank you, because as far as I'd heard, they hadn't got a terribly good reputation. So I would rather that uh, we read the meter or I give them a reading and we sort it out. So I'm not needing a smart meter, thank you. I don't know about yourself. I see the fags have went up, Scotty. This is Dino the Dog. Dino the Dog, the fags have not went up. They would have gone up. So let's get the grammar correct. Let's call in Scotty McClue, the grammarian, and sort that out. Good evening, Scotty, says Catherine Shaw. Please put in where you are watching. We've got a gentleman watching in Paraguay. We have a lot of people watching in Australia. We have people watching in America, in Canada. So there you go. So tell us where you're watching. We've got people watching in Salcoats. We've got people watching in Irvine, in Paisley. Glasgow, tremendous. Edinburgh, excellent. Do you know the dog there in Edinburgh? So let's have a share. Share, 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 share. And also, if you can be bothered, if you're not afraid of work, can you type in, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, Scotty McClure is live the new, right now on Facebook Live. I'm not sure everybody is on the right page, so perhaps you could do that. If you'd like to go and post, those of you that are Scotty McClure fans, and a member of the Scotty McClure fans group, do that. Uh, I'd like you to also follow me on Twitter, at Scotty McClure. I'd like you, if you're a business person, to join me on LinkedIn. Very, very important there. So LinkedIn. Hamru, says Julianne Scott. Hamru, have I said that right? For Wales, Julianne. I say yakida to you. And uh, good evening. Uh, what's Nostas? Good night. Watching in Southport, says Catherine. Oh, oh, oh. you will like the old guy in Southport that I have a laugh with. You will see him on Scotty McClue's YouTube channel. So put that in, Scotty McClue YouTube channel. And very, very important, if you are in a position to subscribe, now this doesn't mean giving any money. This is just a subscription. So you click subscribe on Scotty McClue's YouTube channel. If you can do that, it just says subscribe. It's a little red button on the YouTube channel. And if you can all click subscribe, it would be a tremendous help. I'm needing about 120 or 180 subscribers. And also remember, there's 216 videos on Scotty McClure's YouTube channel. A lot of them audio videos, of course, but they're there for your edification and for your delight. And um, hearing you loud and clear for the Numpty Islands in Indochina. So excellent. So it's uh, Philo Clock in the morning, says Ian. He's in Indochina. Um, I've seen that you and him are funny. You really make me laugh, says Catherine Shaw. I don't know what it is, Catherine. I don't know if I've got a funny face or something. But even when I'm being serious, like I go into shops and I say, excuse me, I wonder if I might have a copy of the, you know, a newspaper or something like that. And they start laughing. And I think, what's funny about that? But there you are. Colin Brown says, Scotty McClure, smart meters are not smart. And they never told me the winning horse on the smart meter, so it's not very smart. <laughs> Andy Rutherford and 12 others are watching and have shared the video. Uh, so there you go. George Raffin, fantastic. Hi from Perth, says Douglas McKinley. Hi to you in Perth. Is that Perth, West Australia, Douglas McKinley? Or is that Perth, the centre of Bonnie Scotty, Scottyland, the, uh, the fair city? 
Uh, please do tell. Spill all, I say. Very, very important. Keep sharing the video, folks. Tell ten, tell ten, tell ten, tell ten. Uh, it's very interesting because we can have quite small numbers watching during the program, and then it absolutely goes berserk, and several thousand of you watch during the week so keep sharing during the week it's lovely of you sometimes i will look at my notifications and it will say 80 people have liked your video now that is gorgeous that just gives me a shine in my step but what i would say to you it would be even more gorgeous if it said 80 people have shared your video Mmm, what about that, dinky do? All right, uh, Douglas O'Killey says it's Perth in Scotland, yes, the fair city, the fair maid of Perth. I remember my dad Skyped me back in the 70s for dogging it. He was ahead of his time, my da. Absolutely, he certainly was in the 70s. So they didn't have Skype in the 70s. I don't know where you're getting that from, Ian. I don't remember Skype. I mean, the, the internet, I only got the internet in 1998. For goodness sake. Um, I've heard the smart meters and microphones built into them. And the listening devices the government's putting in. Stephen, I think maybe you've got a wee touch of the conspiracy theorist about you. I have to say. Um, excellent stuff. What about the national? What about the fences and the jockeys? Yes, I would not shed a tear if the grand national was banned. I mean, I've done the social season in my time. Gone to Henley a lot and uh, all that sort of stuff and uh, of course ascot is there i understand but the grand national the the dangerous big fences horses falling you know you could have a terrible terrible uh, set of accidents there although i was uh, invited to be the chieftain of the bears den and mill guy highland games in 2007 and i was very very honored to be asked because they had very distinguished chieftains that had sir douglas bader the flying ace and uh, they'd had red rum the racehorse as the chieftain fantastic and apparently they stopped at one of the pubs and said would you mind if we brought the chieftain of the highland games in?" and of course the pub staff was like oh no that would be wonderful and red rum was brought out of his box and walked around the car park so i am told Right, uh, Daniel Joseph, a fine, fine fellow. Good evening, Scotty. Good to see you. Good to see you, Daniel Joseph. And thank you for everything you do for so many people. Jim Robbins watching, a fine, fine fellow. Wonderful IT man and um, a very thoughtful and caring gentleman. Tremendous stuff. Uh, there are more injuries at Ladies' Day through the Demon Drink, says Ian Walker. Yes, I suppose maybe heels get caught. And people take a wee tumble if their, their heels are too high. Or maybe the veil over their hat comes down over their eyes and they don't see where they're going. So there you are. Uh, that's a different sort of filly, dare I say. Uh, right. Share, 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 share. Uh, Nivak Svitek says, Evening, Scotty. Good evening to you, Nivak. Uh, where are you? Let us know where you all are. As I say, we had a wonderful uh, gentleman in Paraguay earlier so we were hearing all about him now who has not skyped me um love this man says alan Esker. i thank you alan dinky do to you uh what's your take on syria being bombed scottish is mick mcfarlane i um really have no time for any of this at all i see it is a disgrace i don't care who anybody is i don't care how big they are I don't care how many pounds, dollars, dinares, uh, you know, euros, whatever they've got. I don't care about their race or their background or their creed or their colour. As far as I'm concerned, there is only one race, the human race. And we are all members of that race. And as a result of that, we have a huge responsibility to the other members of the human race. And nobody should ever, ever, ever be in a position to use nerve gas and to use nerve gas against little children whatever your beliefs if we take one religious leader jesus christ himself and we know what happened to him on earth his time was not uh, uh, happy suffer the little children to come unto me 
So there you are. Uh, so that's my take on Syria. It should not be happening any of it. Um, so there we go. There's more old nags on Ladies' Day. Says George Mellon. George, you'll get us all um, quatted. Well said, Scotty. Says George. I think the trainers should carry code. Uh, another round the course in the scorching heat. See how they like it, says Andrew Thompson. Well, let me tell you this. Excuse me a second. Small sip of water required. There we go. McClure just having a light refreshment. Bit of a freshen up. Not a problem. Excellent stuff. All happens. There we go. That's because <laughs> we didn't have a commercial break, you see. Oh, that's lovely. It's lush. Very, very warm in the studio. I have to tell you that as well. Uh, Trump's going to attack North Korea. Syria was a dummy run. Uh, I like the trainers. Uh, I think the trainers, yes, carrying them round. Eddie O'Donnell's watching. Dinky do, Eddie. Lovely to hear from you. A very, very fine fellow and an absolute top class hitting engineer. If you ever get the chance to get in touch with Eddie O'Donnell, he will sort out your heating big time. Right, uh, my dad has a tankard like that. He has his tea in, says Angie. Scotty, did you get that badge at the Garden Festival? No, you would be seeing it the wrong way around. But what it actually is, it's a Scotty McClue badge. I don't know if you can see it. And there it is there, and that's me broadcasting. And um, these badges, the two of them went at a charity auction for £600 each. That just shows you how big the world's top broadcaster is, guys. Right, um, now, what else have we got here? Um, yes, let's hope we don't have any more war. You would have thought people would have learned the lesson. I think if we were choosing world leaders by committee, one of the things that I would strongly, strongly urge people to do is to um, make sure that the world leader was a great historian and had read their history books and had seen people who were poorly educated, like the Kaiser, right? Now, you might think, world leader, oh, they're going to have the very best of education. Not necessarily. A lot of them were educated by governors or governesses, and um, they were educated away from any kind of mainstream schools or education or anything like that. So they're actually very poorly educated. Uh, I remember somebody talking about King George V, I'm saying he's a very nice man, the king. What a pity he's not better educated. So there you go. You better get rid of the badge and make room for your OBE, says Ian Walker. <laughs> I'm not too bothered about OBEs. I can remember a wonderful, wonderful pair of uh, top comedians. And uh, there were one of called Francie and Josie. Uh, Jack Mulroy and Ricky Fulton. Wonderful, wonderful actors, the pair of them, and terrific comedians. And um, they said that they loved the Scotty McClue show. That, to me, was better than any knighthood. Remember, the rank is but the guinea stamp. The man's the gold for all that. The goad. The goad. Uh, where can you get the badges? Well, Colin, we'll probably have some more manufactured and give them away as prizes or flog them or something. How do we get rid of ISIS? Says Daniel Joseph. Well, we've got to find out what ISIS actually is, so-called ISIS, as they tend to talk about it on uh, on television news services. So we need to find out what's going on, what the so-called gripe actually is. So there you are. If you think about it, in years gone by, Britain actually controlled, occupied and controlled the Middle East. And there were still skirmishes and what have you. But uh, they kept order. They kept order. I mean, look at what's happening in Aden. And their guiles were sent into Aden in 1967 and did a first-class job. They, um, they christened the colonel of their guiles, the, the um, commanding officer of their guiles, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Colin Mitchell. They christened him Mad Mitch um, because he'd gone in and taken Crater back. But he was far, far from mad. The one thing Colin Mitchell was most certainly not was mad. So there you are. Wonderful, but the top brass in the army weren't too keen on his style of leadership and management, which was first class, first class. And to this day, uh, you know, they had Argyle Law in Aden. I mean, it's very, very lawless out there in uh, in the Yemen. 
and they had Argyle law because there wasn't any other law. So there you are. And a lot of soldiers' lives were saved and a lot of civilian lives were saved because of that common sense attitude of people like Colin Mitchell. Right, um, we need you in Wigan Radio, Scotty, says Michael Pepper Knight. You're dancing, are you asking? Lol, I mind them the new year. I've shown my age since Angie Thompson. Jack Mulroy and Ricky Fulton. And uh, Ricky was married to Kate Matheson. And Kate Matheson had been a television announcer like my good self at the time. And she wrote me a beautiful letter and I didn't manage to get back to them. And uh, not long after that, uh, Ricky passed away and, and Jack passed away and Kate passed away. Um, Neapolitan, sorry, Napoleon. That's no E O N, you spell Napoleon in. Come on, not Napoleon. Uh, that sounds like an ice cream. Napoleon. Uh, Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, Idi Amin, Mussolini, Lenin, all bad dudes. Can you name any good leaders? I can't. Well, maybe one, Nicola. Yes, Nicola Sturgeon is probably the world's top leader at the moment. Alex Salmon before her was definitely the world's top leader. There is no doubt about that. Brilliant, brilliant man. Wonderful man. Uh, J. Ramsey MacDonald, an interesting one. I know, a, a bit to the left. But J. Ramsey MacDonald, um, James Ramsey MacDonald from Lossiemouth, fabulous leader. Churchill, uh, a very, very good leader, an interesting one. Um, you know, I don't think a particularly nice guy, but, um, you know, a, a very good world leader, but we don't know how much he was stirring it with the other side at the time. It would have been quite good to have got the full story of what Rudolf Hess was doing coming over to this country when he crash landed in Scotland. Um, it would have been quite interesting to see what was actually going on there, why, why he was here and what was the story, because the appeasement movement got very badly rubbished at the time in the propaganda stakes. Same with King Edward VIII, who abdicated. I think he was left with no choice. That was effectively a coup on British leadership, I would have said. I think we could probably have kept King Edward and he would have been a first class king. I don't know if you saw it, probably came up on my social media, but I was watching a YouTube about him and um, nice guy, nice, nice guy. Fidgety, uh, a little bit nervous. He liked to drink quite a lot. He smoked very heavily, um, but uh, very interesting man, very interesting man. Um, so there we go. Now, NSP, the new Scotty party, says Alan SQ. I'm disappointed, Scotty. No notification. You were on. The captain let me down. And I did not. Churchill was a warmonger, says George. Well, yes, he was very keen on war. You see, the thing about Churchill was he charged at Omdurman. And that was what was going on there. Is somebody Skyping me there? Did somebody Skype in? Let me just see what's happened. Is everything plugged in? Yes, it is. So if somebody's Skyping in, we should actually get them. So there you go. Anybody Skyped in tonight and I haven't actually answered them? Do tell. Do let me know. Oops, we're falling about here, guys. Right. There we go. Um, yes, seriously. One of the funniest videos I've seen. Thanks for a long time. Thank you very, very much. Excellent stuff. Not a problem. So-called ISIS are part of your single human race. They would behead you without a single feeling of guilt. I don't think war should be discussed on here. Let's keep it light entertainment. Who's this one shouting the odds about that? I can't see. You're away by now. So there we go. There's somebody Skyping now. Who have we got here? Hello. Who is Skyping Scotty McClure? Who's that? Hello? Can you hear me? Dinky-doo. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hang on. Hello? Ah, excellent. Can, can you see me? You can see me, right? Wait a minute. Stay there. This is a wonderful experiment in broadcast. Uh, let's see what else we have got here. Now, um, right. Oh, can you hear me? No, we're not hearing you terribly well, but keep with it. Keep talking. Say some more. 
Hello. Hello. Keep going. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's all right, my boy. That's great. Can you see me? I can see you, Scotty, but you're a bit jumpy. Is that better? You're a bit jumpy. Listen. Yes. Ah, I can hear you now. Right, excellent. Oh, there we are. Scotty, you'd make a, you'd make a good uh, receptionist, you know. You're really quick at answering that Skype. Answer the Skype. A good receptionist. Are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Can you hear me? Hi, you would, because you're really quick at answering. There you Aye. go. That's they, excellent. They can hear you in Kilmarnock. They can hear you in Kilmarnock. Dinky you doing up to you? <laughs> Scotty, I'll phone you back. I, I might have problems. I think you've got problems. Big problems. Right, I'll phone <laughs> you back. Dinky you do. Dinky do the new. <laughs> Right, there we go. Fantastic stuff, guys. And uh, a little bit of Skype in there. So let's that we we will make this the biggest show on the planet. There's no doubt about that. Uh, should we leave the Middle East alone, says Michael Wallace. I watched a doctor who Churchill had Daleks called Ironsides. Interesting. A wan ringer dinger, says Gary Earl. We can't hear him, says George. Put him next to the mic. He sounds drunk. He's a bit jumpy. It's the pills. Gosh, you're a harsh lot. You really are. Hello, Scotty, says Louis Faber in London. Think you do, Louis. Love to hear you. I would not give him my phone number, says George. No, George, you might not, but I would. I think that's important. So there we go. We'll just sort that out. But that was quite interesting on the old Skype there. Here's Numpty Heed Skyping again. Let's see if we can get him. Hello, Numpty Heed. Hello, Numpty Heed. Now, this is a good experiment, folks. Just bear with me here. Um, I'll see if we can get this guy. I think that's important. Uh, what have we got? Yes, got that right. Excellent. No problem at all. Right, Nub to Heat. Phone again. I say to you. There we go. And excellent. Confirm that. Yes, we can. There we go. And we will see if we can get him to phone back, folks. I say. Right. That's that. I'm just walking away here. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. This is tremendous stuff. And we got that. Excellent. And that. Right. Closing that. Closing that. There we are. You're all going, what's going on here? Right. Uh, what we're doing is we're just making sure all the Skype is set up for the calls. Maybe he has a condition and he sounds like that. He was trying to reverse the charges there, Captain. Just back from Bar Mitzvah in... Rinatia in Israel. Rinatia. Have I said it right, Louis? In Israel. Fantastic stuff. Blair was a warmonger too, says Mick McFarlane. So there we are. Scotty, he said, come on, watch yourself. Yes. Yawn, says Michael Wallace. What are you yawning about, Michael? Just have a bit of patience. Job had patience. Scotty, are you painting or panting? Says Ian Walker. What are you talking about, Ian? For goodness sake. That was us just taking a Skype call. Very, very interesting. So we'll see if Numpty Heed is going to Skype back in. In fact, what I might do, I might see if we can get a hold of him here. If you're wanting to Skype in, it's scotty.mcclue. Get Skyping and we'll go for it. Excellent stuff. You're talking mince, says Michael Wallace. What do you mean, talking mince? We're talking about appointing a committee to appoint world leaders. What's mince about that? Here's uh, somebody there. That's excellent. He's decided to go off. But uh, ah, you're all Skyping now. Excellent. That's what we want. Michael Wallace, I have never talked mince in my life. LOL, says Ian Walker. Absolutely, Ian. Now, it's uh, what we got 22.43. It's time for a share. So can we all share, 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 share. Also, I'm raising money to set up an independent media. So if you can go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick in a couple of quid, that would be fantastic. You're all sharing. Excellent. Keep sharing. Come on, more of you, please. Share, 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 share. What's going to happen in the local elections, says George? Well, George, we can't discuss local elections at the moment on the media on a program like this. So you're an awful man for going down the political route. 
there's things we can say and things we can't. Uh, when you actually talk about it and stop mincing about, says Michael Wallace. Michael, I wasn't mincing about. I was taking a Skype call. Let's see about this gentleman. Hello. Can you hear me? So there we go. He keeps panicking. Roy B. If you're phoning, phone in and we will chit chat. If you're not, push off. Scotty, my wife refused to make me a cup of tea. What should I do with her? Says Alan Askew. Now, that was another subject we were going to discuss tonight. We've touched on traditional marriage. Is there still a place for traditional marriage? Now, we're hearing a lot about feminists thinking they want a share in the boardroom and running the show. But is that really what they want? Or are they just wanting acknowledgement that they are smart and could do the job because I think most of the senior people I've met who are women don't really like the job. They wish that they were actually um, they wish that they were actually at home looking after their children. Excellent stuff, Mrs. McClure. Stop watching. Take the high road. The master needs a receptionist, says Angie. I think you and George Mullen should do a live debate, says Mick McFarlane. Why don't we let the Icelandic people? be the committee they have got it right now i can hear skyping going on somewhere where is the skyping going on because it should be going on here excellent so if you're wanting to skype in it's scotty dot mcclue excellent stuff um why kick why kick says george mullen i don't know what he's talking about there why kick that's an interesting one, George. We don't know what you're coming out with now. Um, so, uh, what have we got here? Yes. Why don't the Icelandic people be the committee? They've got it right, says Ian. I like that. Yes, the Icelandics jailed their bankers during the bankers' crisis. I don't think we put the bankers in jail here, did we? Mm. Drink of water. Skypers have been rockets, says George. Well, Skype in yourself, George, and then we won't have the rockets. Did you see what Nicola Sturgeon said at the World Women Day thing? Yes, I did, Angie. She's first class. We can't see past Nicola in Scotland. A wonderful, wonderful lady. Tremendous stuff. Right. Uh, I'm just seeing if we're all set up with the Skype here. Fantastic stuff. And um, that's that. What we're doing is just getting sorted out. Marvellous. Soon as we can get this, the Skype people coming on here. Scotty McClure, very good. And use the Skype. Excellent. Right. We'll see if we can catch up with you. A lot of people were saying no Skype calls, but I think they're important. Excuse me a second. Another wee refreshment here. We tidy up for McClure. Wow. The heat in here is phenomenal. I may have to... I may have to lose my jacket. I may have to take my jacket off. I don't want to be too informal. Uh, I meant, why Mick? Uh, is the Skype working, Scotty? I'm getting no answer, says Roy. You should be, Roy. Yes, it seems to be working here. I don't think there's a problem. And everything seems to be connected and turned on. So keep trying. And we'll see if we can get you on. I can hear the Skype. So I do know that that's working. So... Um, I don't know why we're not getting you. Nothing like it. A flat cup and a pint. You'll have the cigars out next, McClure, says Gary L. No, Gary. The last time I had a cigar was 1998. Uh, traditional marriage is like a besieged castle. Everyone on the outside wants in, and everyone on the inside wants out. How marvellous is that? I meant it about women being classed on their clothes and hair and makeup. Yes, I did hear that, Angie. It's not fair that a woman's supposed to look lovely 24-7. You want to see me when I answered the door to the delivery man in my jammies. So there you are. I remember um, hearing my missus having a conversation with the milkman. He shouted, is it the usual? And she said, no, no, I'm going to pay you this week. Shambolic show tonight. Going downhill fast as Dan McWilliams. Not at all, Dan. Every day is saying the opposite, the antithesis, they're saying it's a fantastic show tonight. When did you last talk about the Committee of World Leaders, says Michael Wallace. We're talking about it all the time, Michael. We're looking at forming a Committee of World Leaders. So there, what have we got here? The something something are in charge, Scotty. Law. 
Don't know what he's on about. Dan, I love your comment. Shambolic show tonight. Michael, I do not think... What makes you think it was a shambolic show tonight? I would say this has probably been one of the most excellent shows out of the whole 29. So there you go. That's what I think. Fantastic. Going uphill fast. And uh, also, uh, we're looking at traditional marriage. Very, very important. What do you mean by shambolic? Very interesting. So if we had a committee for the world... Would you take into account religion? So Michael, well, religion has never, ever, 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 ever caused a problem in the world. So it doesn't really matter. You could look at the whole religious thing, but I would think you would need to see that your leader was fully educated on all faiths and all of the world's top religions. So there you are. So you're looking at Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism, etc., etc. You're looking at the different denominations of Christianity, uh, Catholicism, all that sort of stuff. So you really want a world leader that knows the whole lot there. Ha ha ha! About time, says Michael Wallace. What are you talking about? Bush was a warmonger. Uh, to George, says Mick. Yes, I mean, I think... We've had one or two war mongers as leaders, and we need to stop supporting that. We need to give them a massive thumbs down if they can't handle it politically and have to go to war. They get the thumbs down. Scotty, why do the Western media all say so-called ISIS when the rest of the planet just call them ISIS? I'm puzzled. Well, Ian, I think the Western media don't want to give them too much credibility. Uh, so there we are. So they're not giving them their place, their name. So it's it's a bit like saying, if somebody's name's Jimmy McQuackle, they're saying he's so-called Jimmy McQuackle. North Korea's looking dodgy, Captain. Uh, well, there's a lot of drum banging there, I think, actually. I agree, but often they are religious disagreements, <coughs> says Michael Wallace. I don't necessarily think so, Michael. The only thing that causes a problem where religion's concerned is a lack of knowledge and understanding. That's what your problem actually is. Uh, David Lee Weir is watching. Time for a share. Share, 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 share. Excellent stuff. Now, like World War II, the so-called Germans, says Ian Walker. Well, yes. I mean, the whole German thing, the Kaiser, you see, didn't understand that when you mobilize the military, and it was Nikita Khrushchev, the uh, Russian president, who actually said to um, John F. Kennedy, the American president at the time, be very, very careful, young man, about mobilizing your military, because you won't be able to stop it once it started. And that's because... The military are very, very good at what they do, and everybody likes to get down to their work and do their work to the best of their ability. Um, so I'm sure we could have avoided war uh, in World War II, but uh, it'd be very interesting. We need to get the facts sorted out. Scotty, have you ever lost a shoe stand? Have you ever lost a shoe stand behind Bush? You would be guaranteed a new one. If you ever lost a shoe, stand behind Bush and you would be guaranteed a new one. Explain yourself, Mick McFarlane. Incredible. Uh, so there we go. Marriage is only a piece of paper. 80% of marriages fall in the first 10 years. Ian Walker. Ian, if marriage is only a piece of paper, why would you have it? So obviously that piece of paper is highly, highly significant, not just to the pair that have signed it, but to the witnesses and to the rest of the people who were there as witnesses. Marriage is an holy estate not to be entered into lightly. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Those are your words, all right? Dream on, Scotty. I'd love to be enjoying your show for Sunday evening, but you've sadly lost your way these days. The show is nada. So what we will do with Pete is we will just block him. There you go. 
he doesn't like the show, off he goes. Excellent. Now, I can hear Skype going on. Who have we got here? Hang on. Yay, Roy B. Hello, Roy. Hello, can you hear me? Right. Why is the show not good? Is it because we've introduced Skype again? Everybody's saying if you can get the Skype back, get the calls, that'd be brilliant. And uh, so there we go. Oh, yes, when George Bush got a shoe flung at him, says Mick. Of course, Mick. Yes, at the press conference, they flung a shoe at George. Too many young ones get married too quick, have kids too quick, and it ends in an ugly mess, says Angie. McClure's wearing his slippers. No shoes required, says Gary L. Excellent, Gary. Wonderful stuff. So there we go. No, I would say that the show tonight has been probably the best out of the whole 28. That's what I would say. Um, there's so many different groups calling themselves ISIS. So the Western media are right to say so-called ISIS. Yes, I mean, you've got to give the Western media um, credibility, I say. Got to go, my friend. Love hearing you. Always try to dinky-doo, says Alan Brown in Washington. Over in America there. Dinky-doo to you, Alan, my dear fellow. Have a wonderful evening and good luck tomorrow, I say, at your wonderful work. I think your show is fantastic, says George Raffin. Keep up the good work, Captain, my Captain. At what, says Claire Plant. What are you talking about, Claire? You need to justify that. Uh, John McDonough, the show's great, Scotty. It's improving weekly. Yes, I think it's growing all the time, John. I really have to say, and that's only with 40 years of show business behind me. Once I get a bit of experience, who knows the heights we can take this show to. Scotty, you're on Wikipedia. It says you've been married three times, says Ian Walker. News to me, Ian. So there we are. Um, Michael Wells, the US media seem to like to play up incidents. Yes, they do at the moment, Michael. I mean, all media are trying to sell themselves. Even Scotty McClue, there's an element of saying, this is what I do. I hope you like it. And also, can you go fund me? But I'm very, very upfront about the whole thing. If you don't like it, it makes no difference to me. If anybody's got a problem with Scotty McClure, that's their problem. Um, the US media, yes, they do. I'm away now, Scotty. I'll catch you next week. Stay safe. And dinky-doo, dinky-doo to you, Mick McFarlane. We have to finish in a couple of minutes anyway, so not a problem. I cannot thank all of you enough for such a fantastic program tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We haven't even scratched the surface with a lot of our subjects. Those of you who were trying to Skype in, um, I don't know how you didn't manage to get through. Everything's working fine this end. I think you probably panic too soon. I think that's what's happening. You're panicking too soon. Uh, do you know how the Americans are using jets that cost £30 million for target practice? How much will they spend on the military? Well, the biggest spending probably around the world is on the military. Boys and their toys. I think we should send in... Uh, to, Ian said yes. No, I'm not saying that, Ian. Um, Thanks for a great show, says Colin Brown. I says if you put two S's on top of each other and the two I's on top of that, it makes the dollar sign. Very, very interesting. The only problem I have, says George Raffin, is you're not on long enough. Thank you, George. Dinky doo. Good evening, Scotty, says Dave Milner. Uh, a friend of mine who watches the show in the last few minutes goes, Ah, you were back to reading stuff out. But in actual fact, He's missed the discussion. Remember, never ever miss a moment of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of life, I say. Nearly lights out. Uh, Gary Tank Commander will sort it, says Gary Errol. <laughs> Nasda Scotty, says Julianne Scott down in Wales and Cameroon. Yes, absolutely Nasda to you. Scotty's going to sing a three minute warning. Very, very good, the three minute warning. Let's have a share before I go. Share, 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 share. Excellent. Thank you to all of you across the world, in Paraguay, in Australia, in Canada, in America, in Russia, China, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Africa, 
North America, South America, the Faroe Islands, the whole of Scotland, the whole of Europe. Thank you for joining me, Scotty McClure, tonight on the World's Top Talk Show, live on Facebook Live, the World's Top Broadcast Platform. Who have we got here? Night, night, Scotty, and God bless, says Catherine Shaw. Excellent. Scotty, can you not do a five-hour show, says Colin Brown. Thank you, Colin. And um, we all appreciate it. I'll have a sip of your pint before you sing us out, says Gary. Oh, absolutely. Yes, handle here. Is the flag up or down, I say? Oh, dear. <coughs> Marvellous. <coughs> I don't know if I should have done that. Tell us where the wizard is, says John McDonough. <coughs> this time last year, I was in Portai in Cardiff, a beautiful place, Wales is. It's gorgeous. <coughs> I shouldn't have had that water. Who told me to drink that water? And uh, where's a missile when you want one, says George Mullen. Not at all. Now, George Mullen does not want Scotty McClue to sing. Vodka and lemonade, says Ian Walker. Absolutely. Sort us out. But I'm going to grant his request not, and I am going to sing. As soon as the program's finished, share it, share it, share it, wide and far around the world. Also, can you all go to fundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen McClure and go fund me. It'll cost you two quid. And um, those of you that have got a few bob can stick that in as well. You have to sing, says Angie Thompson. Angie, I could not agree more. Here we go. Have a wonderful week, guys. Take great care of yourselves. Thank you for joining us on perhaps the finest show out of 29 shows to date. I shall be here, God willing, weather permitting, next week at the same time, 10 o'clock sharp. Watch out for the promotional videos during the week, and we will keep you up to date with what is happening. Look out for Scotty McClue on Periscope, on LinkedIn, on Google+, on Facebook, on Facebook Live, on Dinky Doo, on Facebook. Look out for Scotty McClue on all available social media platforms. Put in Scotty McClue. And if it pops up, come and join us. Go on to the YouTube channel, 216 videos, soon to be 217 videos. Now it's time to grant George his request not. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wittersen. Au revoir and a cheerio. Cheerio, loves, and dinky-doo, Scotty McClure has left the building.